Is the Australian Constitution racist? Well, it has the word race in it, in two parts. Is it time to recognise Indigenous Australians in our Constitution? Actually, the original document did mention the Aboriginal race and Aboriginal natives, just not in a positive way. It was a bit racist like that. Both of those references were taken out by the famous 1967 referendum with 92% national support. But the word race remains and its only practical effect lies in the so-called race power, which before 1967 lay dormant, but since then has enabled federal parliament to make laws specifically regarding Aboriginals. Is it a bit embarrassing to have race in the constitution in the 21st century? I know, let's take it out. Not so fast. Leaving aside the referendum hurdle, taking out the race power would mean many laws enacted over the last five decades in areas such as land rights, health and the protection of sacred sites would suddenly be open to challenge. If we are to avoid this lawyer's picnic, race would have to be replaced with some other formulation specifically regarding First Australians. Some years ago, this idea of taking the horrible word race out but retaining its purpose became conflated with the cause of Indigenous recognition. Add some more sentences about history, relationship to land and culture and you have the minimalist proposal that was thrown around for a few years. In 2017, Indigenous leaders met at Uluru and they went, yeah, nah, we don't want this minimalist proposal. We want something with teeth. We want constitutional change that will have practical benefit. Can you see their point? Merely symbolic change in this dry, dusty old document that most Australians wouldn't know if it sat up in their soup? Would that be worth the effort of a referendum and a campaign? The Uluru Statement from the Heart recommended a voice to Parliament. Malcolm Turnbull, you might remember him, he was Prime Minister then. He immediately dismissed the idea, throwing in at no extra cost some characteristic grumpy Malcolm hectoring and finger-waving. Beneath his bluster lay the reality that he would have had no chance of getting it through his party room. A Liberal Prime Minister with authority, say Malcolm Fraser or a John Howard in their primes, they might have done it. Poor old Trumbull, he was just flat out trying to keep his job. He doesn't have to worry about that anymore. So what is a voice to Parliament? Where to from here? What might happen under a Labour government? These are questions for another mumble moment. This has been a mumble moment.